So without further ado, uh, let's bring on our guest, uh, Comfort Comfort. She is in the house. Hello, Comfort. How are you? Let's hope she's there. Yes, Red, I am here. Hello, hello, everyone. Thank you, guys. I'm just very, very excited that today I am being the one being asked. I'm not sure what I'm going to say, but I, I count on your support. Guys, speak with me. Speak for me. Thank <laughs> God Red just said it. Michael Williams was speaking for everyone, so let's speak for each other. Thank you, Red, for inviting me. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's an absolute pleasure. And I've been so excited about doing In the Chair. Uh, why? Because not only am I focusing on... Um, people within the UK, but also uh, Europe. Uh, tomorrow, we've got somebody uh, who's outside of the UK. He's living here, but he's not from here as well. David uh, Robinson, uh, he's coming on tomorrow. But the whole reason I'm loving doing In The Chair is because it gives us a good chance to get to know the people we see online who are doing webinars a little bit more. So, Comfort. Give us a little bit about your background, where you've come from. Uh, were you born here in the UK? Uh, any family, etc. Bring us up to date with where uh, where you live and what you do. All right. Thank you, Red. I think I'll start with a bit where whether I was born in the UK. If I was born in the UK, everybody would know. Obviously not. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I don't know. I don't know. You could well have been. I have no idea. That's why I'm asking. I would be speaking like one. So, guys. <laughs> so, yes, of course, I come from a country called Cameroon, precisely for my part of Cameroon is what they call the formal British uh, Southern Cameroons for obvious reasons. And of course, uh, I was born and bred in that country. I grew up there until uh, 2007 when I left home for the diaspora, lived a bit in Germany for almost 10 years. I'm married to Mr. Bernard Confo. <laughs> so he's a, he's a great yeah. guy, by the way. <laughs> I, I have so. met him, so he's a, he's a really cool guy. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so yeah, we have married since 2007. Uh, we've been together in Germany. We moved over here to England, uh, here in Birmingham precisely since 2016. Uh, so I have uh, four biological children, but in, in, in together I have five children because our oldest is Bernard's cause, a, a niece that we adopted. She's already a grown-up leaving my house herself, but then that's our oldest. So we have all together five. My hands are full, guys. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, exactly. I've done a few things here and there, but not much online. Um, I was more of a either a stay-at-home mom or trend um, background now about I'm a nurse but I've not been working because I had to raise my family and do all of those things so at some point you know I was just like uh in this country this part of the world that's me people have their ways of looking at things it's not my thing I don't want to go away for 12 14 15 hours leaving my child or my children up to four of them with a total stranger just because I want to make money so I just preferred living with them and living with whatever I have and watch them grow and grow the way we would like to Fantastic. see. It. And of course, 2016 came when Bernard's elder brother called us and was like, uh, there's this opportunity that has come. You want to have a look. It looks really nice. He could not really explain it well. So we listened because especially back home, respect is such a massive thing. You can't say stop there. So we just had to listen. The moment he left, we looked at each other and laughed. And we are like, good luck, because we can't do anything. We've heard a lot about online. So we're not going, we're not doing anything. And of course, yes, a couple of days later, his wife came back to my husband again and say, this uh, opportunity, look at it. It's important. It's really nice. It's different. I don't know whatever he told my husband. He went ahead and joined. I told him, good luck. I'm not doing such a thing. So when he sat by the webinars listening to Charles Awesome, I was just like, I'm sitting here, but I'm not interested. But then there are three things Charles said that uh, am I going to come out of pocket every month? No. Am I going to make people to join, force people to join? No. Am I going to, to make like inventories, buy stuff and keep at home and be selling to people? No. Yeah, I was like, all right, that sounds interesting. Because before then, somebody had pitched a, a, a Juice Plus to me. 
I said, it sounds good. I think that I can do it because I think I can tell, I can speak the way somebody would be, con would be convinced to get it. But what if they believe in me and buy and then tomorrow they don't make the money that they're promising? I was reluctant. So when I got on passive, I said, all right, how, anyway, I've been looking for an opportunity. Guys, you can't make noise. You can't, can you go That's out? all right. Don't, hey, don't you worry. It's fine. I've, I've got a house full. So just keep <laughs> yes, going. So it's absolutely fine. It's, yes. So, so I was like, okay, so much so has been happening apart from raising my children, right? If you have, you must know. Since uh, 2017, there's an ongoing war in my country, which is breaking us really down. So between those years, from 2017 till 2020, when I found on passive, we would go out on Facebook every day. We dress like old women in the village just to attract attention of people, to chip in some support, to help our people who are staying in the bushes, the children dying and all of those things, money not coming in. I said, one, for the fact that I want to stay at home and make money and raise my kids, this opportunity sounds like it, if it's true what Charles is saying. And secondly, we have been on Facebook every day just doing this because we just need to take care of our dying children and women and old people walking to Nigeria and stuff. And so that's how I finally took the decision on the 20th. And I got the opportunity. So when I got in there, the next two days, there was this uh, webinar uh, with uh, Mike Ellis. I was, oh, my God. He sounded, he said a lot of sweet things. That was when I finally, it, kept, it started coming now. And then I discovered red, red for the first time. Because when I came to England, I was like, I lived in Germany for 10 years, learned the language, but it was not uh, sugar licking. When I came to England, people who speak, I not understand. I said, but this is English. Why are they speaking something else? But when I listened to red, I said, oh, he's speaking well. He's speaking the English I've been expecting. And I got everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I've got every word of your five minute video you used to drop every day. So I was waiting for you every day, waiting for that guy who just usually says, hello, hello, hello. It took me long to get uh, Jeffrey Molo's name into my memory. Then looking forward to you, Jeffrey Molo, Mike Ellis. That was how I got the bright picture. It was less than six weeks. I had a video interpreted into Pigeon which is being understood by people in my country, Nigeria, Ghana, and most countries in West Africa. I say, if this is true, mama and papa, they have to hear this, and they can only hear this in Pigeon. And everybody was like, unpassive in Pigeon? I say, yes, I did it. That's how it started. Right. I could not stop. I went on and on and on and on and on till what, we, we have an idea what I've been doing, right? So, Red, you know I can talk to you tomorrow. So if you want to stop me, just stop. Or if you want to know any other thing, I would sure definitely be happy to say. So it's been such a sweet journey, and where we are. Maybe I just let you in first, Red. I can say a lot of stuff. I run my mouth too much. I let no, you no, it, we, we love we love in hearing you. As you can see, uh, I've, I've got a house full as well. So we're in good company, the two of us today. Uh, yeah. What I want to know about actually is your sister from another Mister. Tell me a little bit about how you met Funmi and the relationship you've got with her. Yes, that that's what Unpassive is doing. You know, I feel emotional even as even as you ask now. We met on the normal platforms, the Unpassive thing, because when I did the Unpassive presentation in Pigeon, Collins found it. I knew Collins somewhere before because of the problem back home. We would come together and cry. So, oh my God, what do we do for our people? So when Collins heard me do this interpretation in Pigeon. He called another lady from home, from Cameroon, say, is Comfort an IT person? She said, no. So why? Say, because how she did this video, everything she says is exactly as it is. I don't know how she's doing that. She called, he called me. And so I got, I, we came together now. I said, all right, I know how to just present the thing, pitch it as it is from the theoretical part of point of view but then you are the technician here i don't want to go wrong by starting to explain something technically that i don't know so we came together put this uh, and, and formed this webinar uh, that 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 time was a heroes family and then at some point we had a split and so we turned into heroes uh sorry on passive family and then we became on passive heroes and that's where i knew for me on that platform and it's been going on and on and on. It's like, it feels like I, I'm, that's just a big sister I've never had in my life because I'm the oldest. My father had two wives, if you want to know. My mom was the eldest, the, the elder wife. She died in 2012. I'm the oldest child out of 11 children, guys. 
I have five children, I have 11 younger brothers and sisters. That's me. So, <laughs> so when I look at for me, I'm just like, this is the elder sister that I've never had. And she was born in Nigeria. She's so loving, so caring. And she doesn't care because I'm that one who, they, you know, I talk much and stuff. She just laughs, she smiles and stuff. And it goes really, really well. We've gone so way, long, long way. She came here, stayed with, with us for one week. It was such a beautiful, my children love her. And it's just crazy. So, yeah, that's on yeah, passing. I I mean, obviously, I've met both of you at the Worcester event and the Manchester event. And obviously, you were helping present and all the rest of it. And I have to say, what not only both of you are fantastic, loving, really nice people to be around, but such fun as well. We had an absolute blast. And the smile that you see on Comfort's face at the moment, she, her and Fumi are like that 24-7. It, it, they're such amazing people. And this is why uh, I'm loving doing In the Chair to get to know you a, a little bit more uh, as well. So right. you've, been at, you've been doing Heroes now with Collins and Andy and the others for and Peter Rogers for an awful long time now. Just talk to me a little bit about uh, the format and what you were looking to do with Heroes and why you felt that it was a different webinar from the ones that you normally or normally were seeing uh, out there as far as on passive is concerned? Yeah, the passion, like, you know, because it was just a group of visionaries, like people who saw Mr. Mufaris' vision and we picked on it. And the passion was, this thing is big. We have people from all walks of lives. Because we took examples, especially us from Africa, the type of people we have, we have aunties and mamas who, who just, they trade uh, vegetables by the roadside and they're so hardworking, they need to be here. But then we need to do, then we have people of all levels. All we need to do is educate them. We just want to take this dream and run away with it because we just want to be the Mother Teresa's. Because our understanding was what Ash is trying to do is just penetrate the nooks and crannies, those people down the hinterlands where they, know, they have no clue how good life looks like. Ash cannot go there and go down that place. He cannot go to Papua New Guinea. It takes me, it takes Collins, it takes Andy because Peter Roger has a vision too, even for the UK. So we just, it just worked. So one person came and invited, the, I think uh, um, um, Tony Monk, he came, I'm sure he's the one who invited Andy or whoever invited Andy. Some other person brought Peter Rogers. Each time when they visited us, they said, this one sounds different. And so we came back together, even when we had our split, Peter and Andy were already there, and a few people, Tony Monk, and so on. And so we agreed on the name Heroes Together, and our mission was, let's tap from various walks of life. That's why Andy always comes. I don't have anything to say. I, I, don't, I don't have any clue, and so on. I just listen. So he listens to the tech guys say it from their technical perspective. He says, yes, this is how it works in, in marketing, not marketing, in sales, and what he does from his own background. So when we, our mission or our, our dream was like, we want to paint that picture where if you cannot understand from Collins and the old tech guys, because they are a bit too technical, Andy comes from his own perspective, speaking his own language. I just come because I understand it. I just, I get them to talk. I have nothing to say. People, if you don't understand Collins and his team, you will understand Andy or you understand Peter Rogers or you understand any other person we invite. And so like that, we make sure that everybody is taken care of and so it's become such a family we can't stop laughing there are times we plan a webinar with andy and then we go and sit there and laugh until we, we, we go out of time we we'll stop the webinar we we'll just laugh and laugh and get really naughty it's such a sweet moment like you can never buy that for money you cannot exchange it for anything yeah. Uh, fantastic. I mean, you you really are, and Ashmi Farah says this, one of the best presenters uh, that we have in On Passive. And it's been great to see you uh, in the limelight as far as On Passive is concerned. And uh, Mardi Dagamo, by the way, is listening in and he's oh, just said, he sent me a text saying, tell Comfort she is the best of the best. And I absolutely <laughs> concur. Uh, with what he has just said, you like I said, I've met you a, a couple of times now, and you really are. And not only uh, are you 
just buzzing with energy. And I think everybody will agree, you can absolutely feel the energy that you're exuding here on screen. But in real life as well, you are. You're a real, you and Fummy together are just firecrackers. I can remember, I can remember when you were presenting at the Worcester event. Oh my word, you got that crowd absolutely rocking between the two of you. You know, and this is what I love about you, the energy that you have around you. And it is, it really is contagious. And why wouldn't, why wouldn't what somebody want to be associated with you? Now, if you go back to listening to what our CEO was saying last night about uh, people should attach themselves to the, the ones that have the energy, you certainly are comfort one of those people and i wish you all of the success that is going to be coming your way as far as on passive is concerned now talking about on passive obviously you've been on the journey now for uh four years now and uh hang on what's marty say uh marty's just said ask her how the wind is blowing oh no not now <laughs> I have no idea, guys, what that means. But he said he said it'll make her laugh. So that is it. Uh, obviously, let's go back onto the on passive thing a minute. I don't know what private joke that is, but it sounds pretty funny. Um, obviously, you've been on the journey for four years or more now, as far as on passive is concerned. Right. Why are you so uh, enthusiastic still about it? Why are you still upbeat about it? What What are the key points that you are taking from what is happening at the moment to give you that belief and enthusiasm uh, after the four years that you've been in? Yeah, oh, there's so much to say here. I can be all over the place because unpassive is the way it is. Because sometimes okay phone has to ring too so so look for that phone bearing so you know um it has to do there's just so much i just want to maybe you start from ash his leadership style is just different he's that kind of person you, you're just like who is this guy you know because uh red i come from the part of the world where people like ash a person like me cannot see them talk less of talking to them but then ash is that person you can give them a hug you can tell them you so you're so you're so silly because that's how it is. So I learned just a lot. He's so humble, but then so such a great leader. He teaches from every word he says, from everything he does and stuff like that. So on passive, especially where it is now, I read, I'm just like, this is one of the best moments because you see nothing happening. You hear nothing, no sound. But then this season, this season is so loud. Why? Because he still comes back whether he says something that you understand clearly or not definitely something is taking place at the background and from what i've learned from you all you guys and where i am now i see the future i know that it's bright it's totally different and so i'm just like for those who think that if let's say you're down in doubt on stuff like that I, sometimes you're like i want to wait and see so that i'll tell the story like right to the end there's so much from it then the learning the family that you've met, even you read, even remember that they were in Manchester. Because when we met, like in Worcester, there were a few things that we discovered about each other. You and Andy are so very tall. So, oh my God, Red was this tall. So in Manchester, I remember I was trying to jump. I was walking really hard, jumping to touch the middle of your head. I hope I did, I did, I did do that. It just makes me feel good. This is family because I found love here, genuine love. And then so much, it, it has changed even my mindset, my perspective, because I used to single out myself a lot. I don't belong to this kind of class. I don't think they will accept me. I don't, but then it doesn't feel like that. I will, because it's our thing back home, like when you see people, you call them brother, sister or so, it just sticks. Anybody will call you brother, will call it one sister, but that is how it feels. It's a whole package, right? The learning, the leadership style of the, the CEO himself, learning from people from all walks of life, like you, like uh, uh, Michael Williams, like Mike Ellis, Marty DeGamo. You know, Marty is just one of those people. When you think about it, you say, if people, because there's somebody who joined on Passive through me, he said, if this thing is wrong and people are foolishly following it the way others think, then I will dance the music of foolish people. I'm just dancing that, that dance because there are people here who know a lot of things. They know how these things work. 
they are not blinking because that big picture is already painted, is waiting there. What we're waiting is just for it to be unveiled. It's there. So I'm just on fire because whether you're seeing it or not, it's just standing there like the bride. And the moment they take off the veil, everybody's just going to shed tears. I'm good at doing that, though. So there's just way so much in on passing. I don't even know from, from Papua New Guinea to Canada to, to, to India to everywhere. I have a brother, I have a sister that we have very, you know, so connected together. And it feels really good. And then they hope, they hope for the future. Everybody has a thing in their mind that they've always wanted to do. Moreover, I go back to our 2017 again because our people are really suffering. Right now, we are ready. I'm getting ready and I'm see, I see how I'm going to widen my horizon. I've always loved to travel the world. Now I'm just like, I would go anywhere I want to. And any country I go to, I will first of all look for refugees, people running away from trouble because I don't want my people have gone through. Charity begins at home. I'll take care of myself, take care of people who run for my country that are in Nigeria and Ghana. When in any other country I go, I will look on these type of people first, you know. So all of those things put together, I can't blink. I just smile to myself. I talk to myself because I know that it is real. It's just a done deal, like Ash would say. Nothing has changed. Because sometimes even the situation where we are in now, from the human perspective, we call it a delay. We call it a twist. We call it anything. But sometimes from the spiritual perspective, we could say, I could look at it like, it was written, it was planned by God that we follow this path because unpassive is not for everybody. I mean, the mission of unpassive is not for everybody. So if many are called, everybody is called, but the chosen one, this is that season where they are being sieved out. They are being like passing through the, the, the sieve so that you get the fine breed. That is the team that is ready to take Mr. Mufare's dream to its logical end. That is what is keeping me going because I want to be part of them. I want to get there and I just want to get it done. I hope I'm saying what you yeah, want. That, that, that is a fantastic analogy and I don't, uh, and I agree 100% with what you're saying. And even more so now, uh, I, I believe as well, it, uh, on the back of what Ash Mufara was saying last night as well, that uh, we can't put our trust and uh, hope in politicians and everything else. We have to take True. control of our own lives and what we are going to get out of it. And I think this, this is the only answer. You know, there is nothing else that is going to give us uh, what we want out of our lives. So fantastic interview with you today, Comfort. I, I, I need to have you back on again. We've done Every half an hour. Come. We've done half an hour now, and it's gone like that, guys. You've got to send this video out to as many people as possible. This lady here next to me is an amazing woman. She's got so much uh, fire about her. Her passion is in in such. It really is contagious what she's doing, and we need people to listen to this as well. Comfort, please come back on again and we will do part two of yes, this yes. interview. Anyway, thank you very much, guys. <laughs>